Okay, I have with me Roger Eldridge, um, Chairman of the National Men's Council in Ireland. Um, and we are going to be discussing some issues of great concern to families. Yeah. And Roger, what in your estimation is the most serious problem facing families today in Ireland? Okay, just to back up a little bit on what you said there. I am chairman of the National Men's Council of Ireland, but we work with uh, a group representing uh, wives and mothers uh, called Mothers at Home in Ireland. And between the two groups, we have set up the Family Rights and Responsibilities Institute. And it is with that group that we have, we do most of our work to do with families. Uh, I mean, the, the, if you like, the motto of the National Men's Council is doing what men have always done, and that is protecting their families from state intervention. And uh, that's, that really takes up most of, most of my time, and that is the, the basis for most of the phone calls that I, that I receive on a daily basis. And what's the nature of those phone calls? What's the, what are the concerns being raised? Well, the concerns are about almost always to do with children. That the uh, parent is concerned that the children is, is being uh, kept uh, away from their protection, their influence, their guidance, or that, that a school is, is actually uh, doing that to their child. I mean, I want to make clear from the start that whenever we give help to a parent, we are not doing it to help that parent in a war against the other parent. Yes, I was going to ask you about that because you, you seem to touch on, on schools ignoring one parent. It would seem to be in such situations where families are divided. Is that the case? Well, there's always been problems between <coughs> families, you know, there's always been differences of opinion, different ways of parenting, there have always been those. Mm. Uh, what's happened new in Ireland in the last 20 years is that the state has uh, sought to take advantage of that and uh, basically, you know, using the divide and rule uh, strategy is that they've uh, put themselves into a position where they claim that they should actually make all the decisions about a child whenever there is any difference of opinion between the, the uh, spouses. Now quite clearly uh, those differences of opinion are healthy. It's very good that people are concerned enough about their children that they would want a specific thing. But what has always happened in the past, you know, before the state started uh, interfering, was that the parents would actually come to some compromise. They would eventually work it out between themselves. And so there would be no need for any third party, especially the state, to become involved. Yes. And so, you know, things would just run and to their completion, differences would would, uh, would, get, ironed would get ironed out. So how is this manifesting itself these days? What has happened is that the, the state has put into place, uh, without there being any uh, demand from the people for it, they've introduced what they call family law reforms over the last 50 years. And these family law reforms actively search out parents who are who are in a way wanting to get their own way in a family situation where in the past these family law reforms and the courts did not uh, exist that parent who wanted to get their own way would actually have to settle and compromise now what's happening is that the state has put in place uh, laws and courts that allow a parent who wants to act 
unilaterally, in fact bully the other parent to actually invite the state in to be on their side. And that's what's going on. And we're, the calls that we're getting uh, are from parents who are faithful to their, their marriages, uh, who are, have you know, serious concerns and love their children. But the state has now taken over their family and are supervising their family and you know, basically violating the rights that the parent has. And that's the work that we do, is basically just trying to tell parents what their rights actually are. They're usually very surprised when they hear what they are. Uh, because they're very different from what they've been told, especially by if they go and hire a solicitor. Yeah, so tell us, how, how are they different? Well, the, 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 the laws in Ireland, uh, people in Ireland are very, very lucky uh, in respect of their rights. <coughs> because of the history of Ireland, uh, there was considered a need to have a written constitution so that the the people, the ordinary people, would not be uh, they would not be tyrannised by a ruling elite. And the constitution, the Irish constitution, uh, Bunrach Nehera, is there to actually protect the people from the power of the ruling elite. And in this, in modern Ireland, that's the state. So. Whereas people before uh, the Republic came into being would have been tyrannised, say, by the, the uh, landlords uh, and, uh, and an elite from another country. They are now being tyrannised by the elite in the state in Ireland. It's actually Irish people now tyrannising their own people. And uh, the family is being uh, plundered by the state and the state's courtiers, the uh, people like solicitors, uh, <coughs> you know, pe pe just the, the, the people who have taken on positions of responsibility and therefore authority with the promise that they would serve the people, they are now not serving the people. They are actually exploiting the people for their own benefit. Well, let us just backtrack there one minute, Roger. Um, how then does the Constitution actually protect families? Okay. If you look at the Constitution, uh, it's, a, it's a very simple little book, a little blue book that you can buy for very little money. Uh, it has a section in it called Fundamental Rights. <coughs> and the first of those fundamental rights is to do with uh, personal rights and it talks there about every everybody being equal as a human being 